Tom, good morning. Thanks for joining us once again. I thought you asked the best press or the best question of the press conference when you asked Sam Pittman if he felt like Arkansas had this one taken away from them. So I'll ask you, do you feel like Arkansas was gypped out of that game on Saturday night? Well, they were based on that one ruling. Now, a lot of people have compared this to 2009 Florida, and I don't think it compares because the 09 Florida game looked like it was a game-long attempt to make sure Florida won the game. And in this one, they called several holding calls on Auburn. And I mean, I thought the, the officiating was was pretty well done uh, right up until that last play. And I, I think in the defense of the officiating crew, you just don't expect to see a backward exactly. spike. I mean, I don't know if exactly. I've ever seen one. Exactly. And so uh, the the whistles blew a little bit later than what I remembered, like in real time. When you watched on replay, the whistles didn't start blowing until the two players first started trying to recover the fumble. So, you know, the inadvertent whistle situation and the didn't recover the ball in the immediate aftermath part, it's a really, really murky gray line and if they had if they had ruled on it like the replay official did and y'all have seen that missouri south carolina game from last year that barry odom profited from they got a touchdown out of it arkansas would have recovered that ball and what what just really grates on me is it determines the outcome of the game and if arkansas recovers that it would have been such a great the way they fought back and got got ahead and then held them on the last two a missed field goal and then a recovered, you know, bungled spike, and it would have they would have, they would have been two and zero on the road, probably ranked this week. So it took a lot of things away from that Arkansas football program. Yeah, I've been talking this morning and throughout the weekend about you never expect when the quarterback intends to spike the ball in the ground that that could actually be a backwards pass. It's just I can't recall ever seeing it. You've seen more games than I in your time. I was talking with Clay. I've talked with other officials that, that I know over the way. No one, I, I hadn't talked to one person to say, yeah, I, can, I remember this game from this year. Or that, you know, no one can ever point to a game that that's happened before. And it's just such an unusual deal. It doesn't excuse the mistake, but it makes it maybe understandable, Tom, why it occurred and why it, why it unfolded. And um, that make it easier to swallow, but it makes, you know, at least for me, it makes it understandable why it happened. Yeah, I, I I just try to go with the the idea of justice in a game. And if I thought Arkansas got a ton of calls in the game, I would say, you know, hey, this other team got got messed up by the officials. And so I felt a a burning sense of anger after that '09 Florida game because I just felt like you know there was there was offensive pass interference in the end zone when Andrew Stewart was going to intercept the pass. There was a, a, a pass interference on Ramon Broadway that I thought was, was bogus. There was the Malcolm Shepard call that got the officiating crew in trouble. There was the uh, phantom first down when Tebow ran for nine <laughs> yards on first down. They just moved the chains. There was a field goal after it looked like the play clock had expired. Um, all kind of, And then there was Dennis Johnson hit out of bounds. And so there was a bunch of plays in that game. Mm-hmm. But in this game... I, I don't come away with, like, that crew had it out for, for Arkansas. No. I just think that the the moment, it, it, yeah, it, I think the moment kind of blew them away with how unexpected yeah. it is. But but I do think Auburn should have been penalized. I mean, Auburn should have paid the price yeah. for bungling the snap and, throw, and throwing it backwards. I mean, it's clearly a violation of the rules. Um, and and Auburn did not have to pay the price for it. Yeah, the, the, you know, the, rule, the violation of the rules is it's intentional grounding to fumble the snap, and then to throw it in the ground forward or backwards. But if it's backwards, it's a live ball at that point. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, that's where it gets murky. But also one of the more murkier details, and maybe we'll get a little more clarity, uh, and maybe you can shed some light on this. Arkansas was should have been given the option, and it's my understanding they tried to decline the foul, which was only a two-yard penalty, the Intentional grounding spot of the foul loss of down. You're going to lose the the the, the, uh, the down anyway. So who cares about the two yards? It's the 10 mm-hmm. second runoff that becomes paramount in that moment. Uh, did, did Sam shed some more light, or maybe he will today on on why that Arkansas did not decline, or whether they were given the option to decline the time runoff? I do not know the answer to that. He was not asked on the Zoom call after the game, uh, but 
10 seconds, I mean, that's an extra play or two. Sure. I mean, that's a, you can throw a five, a 10 yard out route, stop the clock and get 10 more yards to help on your, you know, ultimately what has to be a lateral type play at the end. They got one shot at it. And so, no, and, and I, the way I understand it, I think they could have declined yes. a 10 second runoff. No question. Um, and it, as I wrote in my game story, it just added salt to Arkansas's wound. Yeah. That they, oh, not only does Auburn mess up and get the benefit of this ruling, they get an extra ten seconds. They, you know, they don't have to defend. So uh, it just hurts all around. And um, I just hate it because what a story Arkansas would be right now, uh, two and one, one game behind Bama. You know, hey, uh, bowl opportunities. You know, we're. It doesn't change that they're a strong-willed team that that kind of reflects the attitude of their coaching staff. Never quits in a game. All these guys are injured. Uh, Felipe Fr- Franks is getting banged around. Traylon Smith is, you know, his jersey m- muddy and wet, and and these guys are just out there making plays. <clears throat> and so I, I hate, I feel for Arkansas in that regard, no question. Tom Murphy with us here on the Morning Rush. Tom, you bring up Traylon Smith. How about the game he had, both running and catching? I mean, he was unbelievable on Saturday night. He was, and it was his play was kind of like Kendall Bryles' play calling. Um, it took him a while to get going, but I think Bryles, that offense finally started to develop some rhythm and some some momentum. Um, that that shovel pass deep in Auburn territory on the third, and what, I don't remember the distance, but shoveled it like the, the pocket was collapsing all around Franks. And um, Smith had leaked out right in front, and the shovel pass was wide open down into the well deep into the red zone, set up one of the touchdowns. I think the Warren touchdown, but just just brilliant. And they did a lot of good stuff to to exploit the Auburn defense. And uh, the, the thing for Arkansas now is hopefully their numbers will start to balance out because they're going to face mm-hmm. probably the worst defense in the conference this weekend. And so that will balance out from the Georgia game, which was probably the toughest. And hopefully Rakeem Boyd can come back healthy and Burke's the same and they have all their weapons because they're probably going to need them. They're going to have to – this is going to be a track meet. They're going to have to score a lot of points on Saturday. All right, uh, we'll let you go on this one, and then we're going to get back to phone calls because, as you can imagine, it's been loaded up. <laughs> so we're going to open the phone lines uh, back up here. Uh, do you have any concern about this team mentally being back up or where they need to be for this game with Ole Miss? Sometimes when you have a game end the way this one did at Auburn – it's hard for a team to recover uh, when they feel like it was taken away from them. Do you, Any concern at all for this Saturday? Uh, I'm sure Ole Miss feels good about the way they competed against Alabama. I'm a little concerned about where Arkansas may be going into this week. Yeah, that's a legit question, Tommy. Uh, if this had been last year's team and they had somehow miraculously won a, a conference game and then had that happen to them, I mm-hmm. think their will would have been a little bit crushed more easily. And But I, I think... Again, they're going to reflect their coaching staff, and I think they're going to come out fiery and, and hungry and hopefully with some more of their star talent on the field uh, ready to, to take on a, a huge challenge because Barry Odom and his staff, <clears throat> you know, the Mississippi State thing was one deal, but this Ole Miss, they, they get the ball out all kind of different angles, all kind of misdirection. Your, your eyes, as they say, eye candy is all over the field. Uh, they get the ball to their playmakers, Ely and these other guys, and uh, Matt Corral's been on point. Their passing efficiency is tops in the SEC. It, it's going to be a real challenge on Saturday. Yeah, the coaches got their hands full on that. Tom, thanks. We'll talk Thursday and uh, point the conversation more towards Ole Miss, who scored 48 points against that Bama defense. Sounds good. Y'all have a good one.